Okay, so doors pretty much completed. Um, got them painted, uh, primed and painted. Even though this looks blue in the video, it's actually, it's like a green color. I'm not sure why it's blue, but anyway. But on here, you can see, I haven't cut these off yet. I need to cut these. The blocks are just laid in place. <clears throat> this is the center cam. Of course, the mechanism, and then the other block and the pin out this side. And right now, this door, if it was on the plane, it would actually be open. So this pin would be probably more cut off to here, and same on this side. But like I said, I'll do that later. Um, couple of things well let me walk through so the mechanism works pretty straightforward you push down you'll notice here I've got a hole I haven't put the lock in here yet but the lock is all prepped and ready to go in there but uh, you push down on the button you rotate it and you can see on this end the pin comes out it also came out on the back and if you watch you can actually see as I rotate this how the cam works so now it's unlocked and that's the position it is in. You'll see here I've got a, a wire, the safety wire is still on here for the pin that <clears throat> attaches this shaft to uh, the rod, the, uh, the, the gear rod that goes through here. One of the things that's a little different is you're building this using basically three different plans if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, which means You've got Vans, who's talking to you about how to do it for the Vans stock door. You have this 180 degree uh, door mod for the safety lock. And then because I'm using the low profile door handles, I'm also doing the low profile door handles. So what that means is there's a few things that you have to do a little differently. Well, number one, <clears throat> not differently, but you need to know, this rod actually has one of these um, gear shafts on it okay so these rails that you put on you safety wire you push it in through this hole before the block goes on here you get it in through this gear and away you go the thing that's different is if you look at the plans um, some of them will show this rail connected to this rod and then you'll drop the pin down through here which would work fine if this is the van's door handle but the non-vans door handle, you can see in here, maybe, there's actually a clip. Because of that clip, you can't push this down on top of the gears. So what you have to do is you have to, before you put this piece in at all, at least for me, I take this, I take this shaft, I slide it in, I align it up with the pin, drop the pin in, roll it back out of the way now what i do is i gear this and this and then when i'm finished i move this and actually here's why you've got to do it when you're putting this gear in to begin with you're going to start with it really in this position and you keep going down well it won't go back far enough to be able to do that so you have to have this stand alone and then what you do is you rotate it you get it lined to uh, the timing you want. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. Actually, I followed what Van's instructions had. Um, no, I find, followed what the, the 180 degree lock had and it worked really well. The timing was pretty close and it doesn't need to be perfect, especially if you haven't cut these yet, you're gonna adjust the length of them anyway. But um, what happens is if if you rotate this, so once you put it in, you're then gonna rotate it forward like this. You'll now see there's a hole. I haven't put the pin in here yet that goes into this rail, but you drop the pin in here, then you safety wire, that's done, and you're good to go. But that was a little tricky. It wasn't clear that you had to do that. Um, it is if you go to the low profile door handle instructions. If you go to the 181, it's based on the standard Vans handle. So just something to keep in mind as you go through this. Also, the openings here are quite large. Um, when you put the pin in here, it's got a little top to it. It's got a bottom, you got a safety wire. You really need to have clearance. And so I pretty much sanded this almost to the top um, to make it just flush on the inside. 
you want to have lots of clearance so you don't get any binding and you'll notice here it works you know, it works really well so that's uh that's what you want to get it to this is just temporarily screwed in here like i've got these dropped in uh, i still need to go do some countersinking on it and uh, i need to i wasn't going to but i think i'll bend these these rods just a little bit because the door is curved and bands get you to do it so i thought well i may as well do it if i t if this block wasn't here you'd see well actually let me just pop it out and i'll show you so if i take this block out other than it's also scratching up my paint you'll notice that it's sitting really flat to the front of the door that's because it wants to be straight if you bend it it'll curve up again i don't know that it really matters that much but i figure for the sake of just bending it a little bit it, it's not that hard so i may as well do it um and i'll do it for both they're both the same but that's it um it's ready to go like i said uh it looks really good with the low handle door uh the low profile door handle on here pretty pleased with that <clears throat> This is uh, Stuart Systems uh, paint, so it's a water-based paint, and it, uh, it worked out really well. The primer was just water-based primer, scuffed it up a little bit, then I put this on the paint, and that paint is actually a, it's, you do three parts. You have the paint itself, you have the catalyst, and then you have some water that you add to it as well. Uh, this has now been dried for about, uh, I'm guessing about a couple of days, but uh, as you can see, it came out, I think, pretty good, especially if I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to this stuff. So I was pretty happy when it when it painted on here. And again, for me, I'm painting it so that on the inside of the cabin, I just didn't want to have, you know, rough looking fiberglass anywhere. I'll probably put panels in and such. But at least if there's a gap in the panel or anything, there will be a color behind it. So it'll look, uh, it'll look very consistent and pretty professional. But that's it. So, yeah, you just away you go. Oh, uh, one other thing I might as well mention. This safety pin, when you're putting that in here, um, it's a little tough to put into the slot. So what I did is I pushed it in when it wasn't attached. That way I could have support underneath this this rod so I didn't bend one side of it. I had support, I had this in the middle. So it gets that pin, you know, just to just run through it once so that whatever the spring is on the inside gets a little bit of a work and it makes it a little easier to put in. But uh, overall, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. There you have it. And now for me, the next thing I'm going to do is because I now I like the way this worked. I'm taking the I've taken the cabin top off of the plane. I'm going to put the overhead console in. So I'll attach that. So I've got to epoxy that in. I'll epoxy that in. I'll mask it off, and then I'm going to paint the inside of the overhead of that. I guess the canopy top. I'm going to paint the inside of it just like this. And that way, um, you know, even if I put a headliner in or whatever, it'll cover it. If I don't, it'll at least still look okay. Um, and if there, like I said, any gaps, away you go. And also, I did cut these down, so I've smoothed I've smoothed these out as well. So they're all prepped. Um, you know, basically the uh, transparencies are also ready to go in, but I won't do that until the very very end. There you have it, that door, and my other door is over here. Cheers.